um, you're going to increase the control that a person gets out of a racket. They, they can swing harder and, and the ball won't jackrabbit on them or um, trampoline. But it is harder on the arm. I'm talking about polyester and, here. Um, we or do Kevlar. Not recommend um, either Kevlar or polyester to most people. And it, when somebody's really looking for durability in a string job, and they've heard about polyester or Kevlar. Um, we always warn them that the, the downside is that you can hurt your arm. And while you may gain a savings of, of dollars in terms of the dur durability, or you may increase the spin that you get on the ball, um, you always have to think long term. If I'm injuring myself, um, I don't get to play. So I'm not really improving myself by uh, having a, a more durable s string. Um, there are strings that are more durable that aren't necessarily hard in the arm. In fact, one of the best strings for durability and um, easy on the arm is a thing called RX by Gamma. What they do is they coat the um, string with the polyurethane and that absorbs a lot of the shock as well as get, adds durability. Um, anyway, that's that's one way to go that, that's um, both more durable and easier on the arm. Um, we probably string more multi-filament than anything. That's the easiest string on the arm. Um, we use Clip Accelerator a lot as a multi-filament. Uh, we use NXT and NXT Tour a lot. Um, this seems to make a lot of people happy. You put, I, I, I definitely, if you're a beginner, do not string gut. Um, the chances of, dis of damaging gut, if you're not familiar with what you're doing, uh, is pretty great. So um, get confident and, and competent with uh, synthetic strings before you tackle gut. Um, the, the main thing about gut is that you, you don't unravel it. But, oh, um, when you string the crosses, you string with a loop. Um, and if you string with just Let's see what I do this time. I'm not sure. Sometimes I loop it and sometimes I go straight across. I'll probably loop it this time. But um, if you string with a loop, you're less likely to unravel a string. Now I'm stringing with a loop. It's a loop of string. I'm not stringing with the bitter end of the racket string. I'm, I'm just taking a loop of the string and weaving it across. Um, and you do that with gut and you're not going to unravel it. Um, Getting near the end, there's probably a million things I should be telling you. Um, now I'm going to probably use an awl to tie off, but that helps to keep uh, tension on the string. But it's not absolutely necessary. You don't lose that much by just pulling the knot and um, without the, the awl. And the chances of damaging the string with an awl, particularly when you're not used to using alls uh, is probably not, <coughs> not worth the gamble. Um, yeah, if, uh, I'll probably do another short video showing you how to do 50-50 and showing you how to do a, a single piece string job. Um, sometimes the tension no, I, I, this string job and most string jobs are done with a tension um, lower on the mains and higher on the crosses. Sometimes on really long-headed rackets, particularly with narrow um, sides, like a Yonex racket, some Yonex rackets anyway, um, you actually do the opposite. You string the mains tighter than the crosses. And that's because um, the the um, 
crosses can make the frame collapse if you if you make them tighter than the mains on a really long headed racket. The ITF rules say that your racket head can can be fifteen and a half inches from tip to throat and twelve and a half inches from nine o'clock to three o'clock. Um, if, if you have a, a racket that's close to 15 inches uh, from, from tip to throat and it's only like 10 inches across, it, it, you, um, you've got 50% longer strings on the mains and um, that means that you can collapse the frame inward. You notice I used the awl, but um, and now I'm tight. I'm tying the now I cut the excess string away to make it easier to tie that knot, and I pull the frame the awl out after I um, make the first hitch. And I'm cutting, and it's all over.